State Machines is the format that we highly recommend using when you're programming and flowcharting. It'll help keep your program very organized, and uh, it'll, it'll make your life much easier uh, if you stick to this format. So we'll go through a simple example. And the way state machines work is you, uh, you're, you're at a particular state, and you're waiting for conditions to be met. Uh, and once they are, you do something, and then you move to the next state, and then you're waiting for another set of conditions, at which point you'll do something, and then you'll move to a different state. So you're, you're always hanging out at one particular state, waiting for things to happen, and then based on what happens, you move to possibly different states. Um, but but it's, a, it's a good way to progress through, through whatever uh, task you're working with. Um, those things that you're waiting on, they, they, those conditions, they can, be, uh, they can be all kinds of things. They can be limit switches. They can be an analog value reaching a particular value. Um, in our case, we're going to go ahead and just use a timer. Uh, they can be multiple things. They, they could be a combination of things. But in our case, we'll just use a timer. So the first thing we'll do is we need to create a, um, uh, a tag that we're going to use for our state machine. And I'm just going to call it state. And I'll make it a UI16. And we'll make a, we'll put a, um, actually I'll put a zero into it. And uh, the next thing we'll do, since we're going to use a timer, I'm going to go ahead and I'll start up a timer. And we'll call it my timer. OK. Uh, make this look a little better. Uh, OK, so, so now we are going to start checking for states. So we'll check is state equal to 0, which we've, we've told it it is. We've, we've put in that copy statement that it should be. So the first time, it is going to be state equals zero. And at that point, we're going to go ahead and we will turn on a bit. We'll turn on this D1 bit. Um, and, and once that's on, we'll go ahead. I'm going to do a control C here to copy that. Uh, we're going to advance it to the next state. So it'll turn it on, and then it'll advance it to the next state. So, so state is now equal to one. Um, and we'll do this. We'll use a wire router to, to loop everything back. So uh, after this, um, it'll it'll loop back around. It'll check its state again, and now it's going to be state equals one. So we need to provide something for that condition. And here's where we're going to go ahead and we're going to check some values. We're going to check uh, has my timer advanced to one second yet. And if it has, let's go ahead and turn off this bit. And let's, let's advance the state to state equals 2. OK, and we'll connect up these wires. And we need to make sure we connect up the uh, timer is not greater than uh, or equal to one second. Um, if we don't do that, then it's going to fall through when it gets to that no, which it will get to the very first time it does it, because it'll it'll first go state equals zero. Yes, um, is you'll turn on the output bit. You'll copy to one. It'll loop back around. It'll say state equals one, which it will be. It'll ask is the timer greater than or equal to one, which it won't be the first time. It'll, it'll be a tiny fraction of a second. Uh, so it would go out the no path, which if it wasn't wired up, would cause the program to start over again from the beginning, which would copy a zero in a state, and you kind of reset your program. So you need to be sure to always wire up all of your connections. Uh, so now we need to handle the case that it is two. So in this case, with state equals one, it's going to keep looping around. Since I wired it like this, uh, it'll until it reaches one, it'll just keep going through this loop, just checking over and over and over again until finally it's one second, in which case it'll, it'll go ahead and it'll turn the output off and it'll advance to the next state. So now we're going to handle that next state. And we will, uh, we'll see if two more seconds of advance. So now my timer will be equal to three in this case. So the first second it took to get here and then two more seconds. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just reset the timer. And we will advance uh, the state, we're actually going to bring it back to the first state, which is state equals zero. Let's 
so uh, so again this will uh, this will cause the the program a after it's already moved through this copy statement it'll go through here and follow the no path over and over and over again for two sec two more seconds until finally it's true and then it'll reset the timer and it'll move the state back to zero and we're going to go ahead and, and link up this this other path uh, there 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 isn't any condition in this program that it should ever follow that path but we to keep things uh, looking good we'll go ahead and we'll link link that up uh, at this point we can um, program and I'll put this in debug mode and we'll switch to value mode and we'll run it and you can see the state number is right here and you can see that it hangs out for one second in the one and then two seconds in the two so one one two one one two and you can also see the output bit it hang it stays one for a second and then it stays at zero for two seconds uh, so it's doing exactly what we want it to. Um, th so this, so this, is, this is how you'd format your state machine. We'd really recommend you, you do it this way. Uh, sometimes people ask us, hey, can you, can you do several tasks like this in parallel? Can you do multiple state machines in parallel? And, and you can. And I'm, I'm going to close out of this project, and I've got another one uh, already built up, and I'll show you the difference. Um, I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit. Uh, the difference is uh, I've, I've created a second state machine. So I've got state, but I also have the state 2 I'm using for the other state machine. And I, instead of just having a my timer, I've got a time 2. Um, and you'll see down here, instead of, you see I'm comparing a state here, and I'm advancing state here. Uh, in this one, I'm using S2, and I'm advancing S2 over here. And instead of using my timer, which I use throughout this one, I'm using a uh, time two over here. So, so the way you do it is you you connect up all of your state machine one blocks to a wire router, and then you'd you'd route them to your second state machine, and then you connect all of those uh, blocks up together, and you'd you'd route them back to the beginning. And and that that would allow you to do two things, two state machines in parallel. And in this particular example, I've I've still got the one and two sec uh, the one second uh, wait for that, and then two additional seconds uh, waiting waiting for it for in the first state machine, and in this one I'm waiting a half second, and then another half second for a, a second bit doing doing a very similar procedure. And I can zoom out here, and I can show you that they're both running in parallel. Uh, so this is still. Uh, uh, hanging out here for one second, then hanging out for two seconds, and you'll see this one is uh, half second, half second, half second, half second. Um, so, so it, it's doing both of these operations in parallel. Now, the the actual refresh rate where we draw all the stuff on the screen here only happens every half second. So, um, it, it it sometimes gives the appearance that it's it's not hanging out for exactly half second, but that's just because of the refresh rate on uh, how often we pull the device. Uh, inside V Builder, um, but yeah, you can see this. This is how you do them, and you can imagine if you needed a third state machine, you'd go ahead and you you draw a third one down here, and you can do as many as you need, as many parallel operations as you need. So that is state machines.